crusaders and welcome to my august wrap up now this is going to be a much more chilled wrap up than usual because i really didn't read that much in august no i finished three books even though one of them was only 70 odd pages so but one of them was like 600 so i'd say three books on average is what i managed to achieve and that's basically just because august was a busy time for me I was just going to a lot of places and loving life doing very different things than reading. Taught a lot of National Trust properties and I took pictures of them which are on Instagram if anyone's interested because just, I don't know, went to Lime Park the other day, saw the lake in the gift shop, they were selling all manner of Colin Firth, Mr. Darcy memorabilia. <laughs> they had a mug with his face on and I was very tempted to buy it but then I was like, Victoria? Calm down on your love for Colin Firth, but seriously, I do love Colin Firth. I don't quite know where the love came from. Okay, I do. It was from Bridget Jones's diary. I also think that Colin Firth in Mamma Mia is perfect. I love it so much. But that will just start me on my love for Piers Brosnan and we don't have all day. <laughs> That is also, I've also been on holiday both sides of August and that's the reason that I've not managed to watch as many people's videos and I've not managed to make as many videos. I mean, I said that in my July Reads video, which really wasn't that long ago because I filmed it halfway through August. But I'm filming my August Reads video on the 1st of September for the first time ever. I, I have to applaud myself for that one. Please, will you, are you, please be proud of me. Anyway, I shall actually go on to what books I read in August. To start with, I read this. What is this? This is interesting. It doesn't have a title. This book is called The Life of Larry Chewbacca So Far. I got sent this from the author for review. Brandon Mullen is his name and I will link his website down below if you want to look at it for yourself because I found this absolutely hilarious. I gave it four stars. I did a Goodreads review, so I will also link that down below because just this is the strangest thing I've read all year and it was mad and hilarious and I just can't get over it and just, it's very difficult to explain. Basically, the style is the first thing that's like really different because it's different perspectives at first and all of those perspectives are written in different colours and um, like different perspectives of people in Larry's life. It has illustrations just to show the weirdness of it. That mm, Russian man is holding a flaming sunflower on a horseback with Larry as a baby to ward off a ghost. That is just what you're in for with this. So it's all different perspectives at first and then as it goes further on it's just written in black because it's all from Larry's perspective and it's really interesting. I mean even the backgrounds are different like that's a storm and everything. So Larry has an unusual talent. After he was caught in a storm he meditated for quite a long time and he just realised that he could perfectly predict the weather using the vibrations in the ground. Kind of like dogs. No, yes, no not like dogs read this and you'll get the reference there i have to say it only appeals to a certain sense of humor that luckily i have but i really don't think everyone would enjoy this and get the sense of humor so i will say that about it um but what i also say about it is the characters are really great um and Larry's relationship with his mum and how he talks about all the people in his life that has influenced him in becoming this crazy mad, mad superhero is pretty great. So I'm going to leave that there. Thank you. I got some stickers and a postcard as well. The next book I finished was a considerably larger one than the first book and that was Promise of Blood by Brian McKellen. I know I was reading this at the end of July. I got about 100 pages through it. And I finished it in August, but it did take me the whole of August. And not because it's a slow book, just because I was really taking my time with it. So I have been with this book for quite a while, which makes me love it even more. I really think I find that when I take my time with books. You just really get involved with the characters. 
So this was really good. I also gave it four stars. I heard about this from Catherine's channel, The Android Conundrum, and she has done a good review on it, so I'll also link that down below. She does good reviews on a lot of fantasy books, by the way, so you should probably check her out if you like that. Um, so this is about um, Tamas overthrows the king kills all of the nobles, kind of like the French Revolution, only this is with wizards. He's a powder mage, which means that he can, um, just the way he shoots and the way he controls the powder in the air is, is really fascinating. And there are these others, the privileged, who were kind of the king's inner circle guards and they have been killed and some of them, but some of them are still around and there's an army going and there's a war starting with another country so it's all of that and this is Tamas and he is you know just overrun a king and is trying to run a country and start it all but there's traitors about and it's told from a lot of different perspectives I liked that because I loved the family dynamic because his son is a perspective and he's like addicted to powder really he's got a bad addiction to powder and they don't like they have a strange um father-son relationship and there are different perspectives there's um a detective inspector there's don't rain on me don't rain on my parade oh please don't rain we'll crack on even if it's raining like i said there and there are different people so I really like it that way. I do think that some perspectives were done more than others and I've liked to have seen more from certain perspectives. I'd have liked to have seen more from the females in this book. I don't think that they were done as well. But overall that, um, that didn't stop my enjoyment of the book and I can't wait to read the sequel. And the last book that I read in August was Of Things Gone Astray by Janina Mathewson. This was such a little gem, a little surprise to me. I just picked this up in a book barn I went to, which more about that in the haul coming very soon, uh, because I loved the cover. It was it was a massive cover by this girl is turning into a tree. I was so intrigued. I was also intrigued by the back. Mrs. Featherby had been having pleasant dreams until she woke to discover the front of her house had vanished overnight. And I was definitely not let down by this book. I had to give it five stars. That's how much I like this book. It's very light magical realism. One day people wake up and discover that something very dear to them has gone missing. Mrs. Featherby is a recluse. She never talks to anyone. Wakes up to find that her front of her house has gone missing. There's Robert who is swamped down in work, constantly working, working, working. Can't spend enough time with his wife and daughter wakes up, goes to work, work's not there. None of his work contacts are in his phone, it's as if work never existed. So those are just a couple of examples, but there are more characters in this book. But although this book has very short chapters, so although this book has very short chapters sometimes done through the different characters, it's done so well. Everyone has their own unique voice, no one is the same. There are two gay relationships in Tattoo in this book as well, as well as the straight one, so I really loved seeing the diversity there. So I really don't know what more this book could have done. I was left wanting to find out more about the characters, but not wanting the book to tell me any more about the characters, because that would have spoiled it, so it left it at just the right place for me. The stories played out how they would in real life. Things didn't happen really fast, there weren't dramatic transformations they were just slow and they all blended together nicely and you left feeling that each of the characters had changed somehow but realistically it's just such an accessible and relatable and lovely story and I just recommend it highly especially if you like the whole magical realism aspects of things so I was very happy with this and that's what I read in August. I don't have any big plans for September at the moment, but equally I don't have anything going on in September, so I have more time to give to my reading. Um, I don't want to make a TBR because I don't know how I'm going to be feeling. 
but I do know right now I want to start reading a classic and there are two that I am trying to decide between. I'm either going to start reading The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy or North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Oh, but I was planning on buddy reading this with Rachel. I should probably tell her that I want to start reading it. That would probably be a nice thing to do. Or maybe I'll just start reading it and that wouldn't... Yeah. Did I tell you, Rachel, I'm sorry if I've started reading this without telling you about it. That was naughty of me. I don't really know overly about what either of them are about. I've read Thomas Hardy before, I know I like him. I've never read Elizabeth Gaskell, but I've been really wanting to read North and South. So I'm sure whichever one I'll read, I'll enjoy it. Maybe I'll read both. What? Why? I should be able to read blooming both of them. So I think I'm going to wrap myself up there. Thank you for watching this video. Please tell me what you've been reading. I would, I, lo I always love reading what people are reading. That's as fun as reading. Until next time, look in the shadows guys.